Okay. All right. Hello, sir. Welcome to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are with uh, world number one, John Rahm. Uh, John, welcome to your second career Ryder Cup. Uh, you know, frequently through these interviews, we hear about uh, the reverence, uh, you know, um, the European side as for Seve and Jose Maria and such. But beyond your two countrymen, which are obvious answers, are there any other players as you were growing up, the, as you watched a Ryder Cup, um, beyond the two that you kind of uh, locked into and, you know, were kind of captured by their spirit and their fervor for the Ryder Cup? I think uh, one that is often or often can be overlooked is Monty. You know, Monty had a, had a really good run in the Ryder Cup, especially in singles, right? Um, somebody who had a great career, who maybe was not the most vocal player out there, like maybe Seve was, but uh, got things done. He was a tough guy to beat. So I think, uh, I think Monty is one of those that, that can be overlooked. Okay, thank you for that insight. Let's uh, start back right. That is number 11. Hi, John. Only your second Ryder Cup, but you're already uh, pretty much expected to be one of the leaders, certainly on the course, aren't you? Are you ready to make that step up? <laughs> Man, That's easy. What kind of a player would I say if I say no? <laughs> right? So, yes, yes, I, I'm ready for that. It's, it's a challenge I look forward to. Obviously, there's a lot of players in our team that have a lot of experience and know how to get it done. Uh, I'm ready to add my name into that, into that group. Tell me a feeling that there was going to be extra responsibility on you, given, obviously, your position in the rankings. Yes and no. Uh, we have plenty of players in the team that are vocal enough, that have done this enough, that naturally will gravitate towards for guidance. So uh, I'm not going to actively go and just make myself, hey, I'm a leader now, because I don't have that massive of an ego. So in that case, uh, Hopefully, like I've done so far this year, I let the clubs and the ball do the talking, and I leave the, the speeches and the leadership to the guys that have been doing this for a long time. John, right behind me, Mark Twenty. Hey, John. Can you uh, describe what what you believe Pulse means to this team and, and what he's done over the years? On, you know, in this in this competition for you guys. Well, I think Pulse is one of those players. Um, you might get once in a generation, right, that embody the, the spirit of the Ryder Cup, right? He, you have somebody who, world ranking-wise, it's from 40, 50. You know, you wouldn't say world ranking or stats-wise is anything, you know, massively special. But when he steps through the doors and you get to the Ryder Cup, it is Ian Poulter. He's got a pretty good record and he's a tough guy to beat. It's match play. And it's something special. And uh, that's the beauty of this team. And that's the beauty of this event. And that's the, the beautiful part of something and somebody like Ian Poulter. Uh, they really become somebody this week. But just as a follow to that, can you put yourself on the other side? Um, can you put yourself on the other side of, of as an opponent? And, and when he gets on those rolls that he's gotten on, you know, with the eyes and the, you mm -hmm. know, Fist pumps and the long. Yeah, when he gets and possessed. Yeah, exactly possessed. <laughs> uh, how, how how rattling or maybe under the skin can that be for an opponent? Do you think in your? In your I wouldn't want to play Ian. That's not in that, especially in that mode, like we saw in Medina. That's because uh, you have somebody who's a very good putter who will make the putt at the right time, and even though, like I said, might not look like anything special, he's not going to make any mistakes and he's going to hold on to that match, and just be there and be relentless, and that's the worst type of opponent. He's, uh, he's a hard, tough man to beat, and, you know, it's a great guy. It's one of those guys in other sports that you may hate him if he's not on your team, but you love him if he's on yours. Thanks, John. I think number five. Yeah. Hey, John, what, I know there's still the Ryder Cup, but when you look at the season that you just <laughs> completed, it, there was a lot of stuff. That there was mm -hmm. a lot going on. How do you – sum that up or you know, <laughs> how do you reflect about that? You know, it's not the first time I answer this question and it just dawned on me that it's only been five and a half months since my son was born and there's been so many things that happened since then. It almost feels like it's been a couple of years worth of experiences in, in those five months and besides the 
setbacks that I've already talked about extensively. Um, the good moments, the, the great experiences, the happiness vastly outweighs the setbacks. And that's all I can say about this year. You know, I've had, became a dad, you know, we're in a really good place family-wise. I'm very happy at home. It's, it's been amazing. Got my first major and played really good golf all year round. Uh, I have nothing to complain. It's, it's been amazing. No matter what happened COVID-wise, no matter what events I missed or what could have been, still has been an amazing year that I'm really thankful for. And I think that's the most important thing, right? I feel like it's very easy in life to focus on what could have been and what you didn't have. Uh, but, you know, I'm choosing to just realize how many good things have happened and forget about those moments. Does that kind of perspective or does that possibly give you some perspective coming into an event like this that a lot of people view as, you know, the biggest thing, uh, ultra important, super important. Obviously, you want to win, but it. Kind we of do. We off. do want to win, but it's a team effort, right? It's not like I can do it by myself. Uh, unless you're Poulter, he can do it by himself. So, uh, <laughs> it's. It would be a really nice end to, to the year, right? Uh, even though we've already started the new season, technically, uh, it'll be a very nice end to what's been a wonderful year, right? Um, that win in fair in France. You know, you create a bond that it's unforgettable, and it would be, you know, a really good feeling to be able to do it on first try, in, in my case, on, on U.S. soil as well. So it's, uh, it's something we all want to add to the calendar. It's something we all want to add to the repertoire, right, being able to win a Ryder Cup, especially in, in a way, a way country. Straight across, uh, number three. Hey, John, from what you've seen so far, um, what are the biggest differences in temperament and captaining style between Thomas and Parik? Hmm. Don't know if my, my vice captain will let me disclose too much. <laughs> uh, well, I must say, I didn't know either of them that much before the Ryder Cup. Obviously, I've been a pro for a couple of years only when it happened in Paris, and I'm predominantly on the PJ Tour. So I don't see Thomas, I didn't see Thomas that much or Padraig. Um, they can say, uh, the only thing I must say, <laughs> Padraig is a lot more calm than, than Thomas was. Uh, am I right on that? A little bit, yeah, okay. So uh, I, I feel like that's a better question for a vice captain because I think they, they see and hear a lot more of the reality, cause, right? The captain needs to be calm, cool, and composed for all the players, right? It can't be going off on all of us. So uh, <laughs> we might not see the whole, the whole truth, uh, but obviously they've both been very, uh, very well spoken and what they, very well expressive and what they have in mind, what they expect from us. And uh, it's, you know, they've made it very easy and very comfortable for all of us. They've, do, they've done a really good job at, at just letting us do what we have to do and just letting each one of us know, especially in my case, what they expect from me and what they want me to do. And, and that's, that's been wonderful. Quick follow up. I know you can't name names, obviously. How early did you know? when you were playing first and who you were playing with? Wait, what do you want? What do you mean? How early were you to given that information of who you're going to Tomorrow? Gonna yeah, who you're going to play with tomorrow and that. Well, I still don't know, so you tell me. I think that like, you guys think we know a lot more than you guys know. I mean, I have an idea of a couple of players I may play with. Uh, I mean, didn't you guys see us throwing balls in the tee yesterday? I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> well, here you go. That's how we do things. Just leave it out to chance. <laughs> Straight back, uh, 26 hand. Hey, John. Can you talk about the transition going from golf as an individual sport to golf as a team sport? What the transition's like for you? Honestly, it's great. And it's, it's something that, for some reason, for all of us, becomes quite easy. Uh, I think because we have so much of individual golf where for the most part, you only care about yourself. A lot of the decisions in life, and even at home, I've made due to golf and what we need to do to become the better players. When you get here, it's not just about yourself, right, uh, or your family. It's, it's about all 12 of us. And to be fair, a lot of the decisions are made for us. It's a lot easier. But uh, it is really cool to see all these great players, the people that have been doing this for a very long time. Uh, I mean, Christ. When Lee played the Ryder Cup for the first time, I wasn't even three years old yet. And 
to see all these great people that have accomplished so many things come together with a smile that only a team event and the Ryder Cup can bring to you, an excitement, a juvenile excitement that you don't usually expect a 48-year-old to have. It's, it's very unique, and it's something that I wish everybody could see because I feel like a lot of times we're missing that in life, and one, a week like this can definitely give you that youth back in that sense um, me mentally, right? And even though I'm still 26, uh, I'm very young, still takes me back to when I was a kid hoping to be playing in the Ryder Cup, when I was a kid representing Spain and how I felt back then, and obviously it magnified times you know, a hundred in this in this situation, but it's it's something that uh, it's very very fun. It's what makes the Ryder Cup so special, amongst other things, right? I mean, we're all one, and we're all the same, and we all have the same level of excitement and the smiles that we see around, and the happiness and the joy is something that, again, I wish everybody could see. Far left, twenty-two. Hi, John. You're um, world number one and U.S. national champion. Is that? Does that, do you take, how do you balance uh, taking confidence from that or against the pressure it might put on you? And as a, a quick quick second part or unrelated, have you ever actually met Monty? I have met Monty. God, I can't say when, but I have met him uh, quickly in passing. Um, I remember not meeting him, but I remember I watched him finish the last two holes in Valderrama. I think it was 09. Uh, on the Volvo Masters, uh, amongst many other players. Paul Casey and Stents inside my shirt. There's a picture that came around a couple of years ago. So um, I remember watching him then. Uh, and if anything, being a major champion this year on a tough setup, it just it should give you confidence, right? Uh, at the same time, it's match play. It's different. Tomorrow morning, foursomes, right? So Or four balls. So you're playing with a partner. It's not individual anymore. So it is a little bit of a different game. But at the same time, you got to do try your best, right? In that sense, it's the same thing. So um, if anything, just gives me confidence in that sense that uh, I know what I'm capable of. All right, we've got three minutes left. One question each. Let's go to six. John, it's a pretty demanding golf course, obviously, and the, the cold and wind can, can wear down on anybody. How do you prepare your body and mind for the possibility of going all five this week? Well, I'm, I'm physically ready for it, you know. Uh, I know I look like it, but I train every day when I'm at home, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> And I'm, I'm in really good shape in that sense. I have no problem walking 36. Um, I feel like the biggest challenge on an event like this is possibly five rounds of the men mental aspect of it. And that's where I think you need to learn to really unwind quickly and get ready when you need to, right? Uh, and I mean on the golf course as well. You can't be 100% focused locked in for five hours because that is mentally draining. You got to learn how to you know, switch off a little bit, have a bit of fun with your partner and the caddies, and then when you need to hit the shot, be ready and in there, right? So. It's a bit of things. Uh, also, when you get to the team room after the round, practice round, whatever it is, everybody's having such a good time that that in itself is a great rest. Now, in my case, the most important things outside of all that would be hydrating properly and getting enough sleep. Those two things are going to be the keys this week as well. So uh, throughout the week, make sure you sleep enough and, and you're letting your body recover and hydrate to make sure that recovery is even better. Okay, last English question here, then we'll do a few Spanish. Go ahead. When did, John, when did this competition really begin to matter to you? And then the second part is the video that came out out of context from Team Europe. Is that an accurate depiction of how you celebrated <laughs> in 2018? <laughs> no, but that's what they want me to do this year if it were to happen. Um, I mean, it's not what I did. I can tell you the environment is not too far from that. Okay, now nobody was on tables shirt off. I certainly wasn't. Um, but it's the environment is, is somewhat similar. Some people were going just as hard uh, that night celebrating, which I don't blame them. You know, it's a stressful long year. And like I said earlier, when you're in an environment with no judgment, you're not scared of anybody posting it on Instagram. Uh, you can let yourself go a little bit and be vulnerable. And that's a fun part out of things like that. Then when did this event? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know exactly the age, uh, but it's been on my radar for a very long time. You know, I think when you're born in Spain, the Ryder Cup is something special. You know, there's a lot of legacy in this event be between Seve, Ali, and the players got the most amount of Ryder Cup points for Team Europe in history, right? It's, uh, it's a lot to live up to. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, a lot of uh, expectation when you're a Spaniard, but that just means, right? I mean, a lot of times we're called 
a different word for passionate, but I think that's when all this great emotions can be used in match play, and that's why it's just general people have done great. So for a very long time, I've been looking forward to being a Ryder Cup player, and, and it still is something you have in mind every day, right? I mean, uh, especially while you're approaching. Obviously, we have a lot of individual events going on, but, you know, uh, when the topic comes up, it is something, can't explain it, but it's very unique. Okay, Juan, you want to ask him two quick ones, Espanol? Okay. Juan. Bueno, contar un poco las diferencias principales que es entre París y aquí, tanto como jugador <laughs> como personalmente, y sí. luego el contexto, ¿no? Creo que somos menos de 10 españoles, incluyendo a Kepa, ¿no? <laughs> a ver, el, el, hay diferencias, ¿no? Lo primero, no soy novato, ¿no? No es mi primera raid, es la segunda, sé un poco... Sé lo que va a ser la dinámica de la semana, más o menos, qué compromisos tenemos, qué, no te, qué compromisos no tenemos. Y, digamos, cómo manejar mi tiempo, ¿no? eh, organizarme mejor. Y eso es algo muy importante, que la primera raíz, la verdad, no sabía. No sabía cuántos compromisos de verdad íbamos a tener. Eh, y luego, bueno, a ver, en esa era mi primer año, pero también estaba, creo, número tres del mundo. En esta es mi segunda, que digamos es relativamente pronto, pero estoy como número uno después de haber ganado un grande, ¿no? Así que como persona hay mucha diferencia. He aprendido mucho, he crecido mucho y, y bueno, me veo un poco más preparado para ello. Eh, no menos, un poco menos intimidado, pero con muchísimas ganas a la vez, ¿no? Al final es, es una semana muy bonita, muy única. Sí. Muchas reservas, por supuesto, y cautela con el tema de los emparejamientos, que se entiende perfectamente. Sí, bueno, pero, porque ahí no, no podemos hablar no, del no, tema. Por supuesto, pero eh, sí que hay que hablar de los puntos fuertes de Sergio y qué sería el punto fuerte de una pareja John-Sergio, ¿no? ¿Cómo funcionaría eso? Yo creo que el punto más fuerte es la garra y el, la conexión española, ¿no? Al final somos dos que nunca nos damos por vencidos, que vamos a luchar cada golpe y con cierta imaginación en el campo, ¿no? Que eso en match play es difícil de debatir, especialmente en un día bueno. Ahora, puntos fuertes de Sergio, pues que de tía Green es un robot, no falla una, <ríe> así que yo encantado. Y no es que yo sea alguien que de tía Green le vaya mal, ¿no? Así que es, somos dos jugadores muy buenos de tía Green que en un campo como este, en estas condiciones, pues puede ser muy difícil debatir, ¿no? Pero yo creo que nuestro punto más fuerte es, es esa garra, esa determinación que, que nos viene un poco únicos, ¿no? Esa, como en español diríamos, un poco de mala hostia. Okay, I think they're they're pulling them away. We got a okay. time sensitive here. So sorry. Thank you, John, okay. for your time. Thank you. Appreciate okay. you. Okay. Thank you.